So after a long day of dealing with all the kids on my own, because we just had a baby, my seven-year-old autistic son decides that, well, he's going to stay up every night till around 1, 2 o'clock. No sleep for him. So I start taking him in the carriage, and we walk and walk and walk around and around and around the block just to deal with the time in a normal way. And at a certain point, I hear singing. So I go closer, and I hear it's a bunch of guys, maybe 10 guys, having a kumzitz toy, lahoy doy, slash him. And I start thinking, here I am. I've been walking in the middle of the night for already an hour. Can you help me? Can someone do something to be here for me? Why do they have to sit there? Are they going to even wake up for shachars tomorrow? What are they doing with their lives? All of a sudden, that feeling of sinas chinam starts to come into my heart. The truth is that when you think about it, no sinna, no hatred is really baseless. Bechinam. Usually, no one wakes up in the morning and says, I just don't like that guy. Why? No idea. I just hate him. Usually, you have a reason. Well, he's too religious. He's too secular. He's too tall. He's too short. There's some reason in your head. But from this story, we see, though, that there are reasons. But those reasons are usually based upon some constriction that you're feeling in your own world. And then with that constriction, with that difficulty that you're dealing with, you're going to start to have all the reasons to hate another person. While in the end of the day, there's no real genuine reason, if it was from an objective standpoint, to hate another person at all. You know, here in Eretz Yisrael, when there's a, when there's a drought, so the Rabbanim start making fasts and special tefillahs, and then they start looking into what's wrong with Kali so what, what Avira, so to speak, are we doing? The truth is, though, sometimes there's good things. There's a chef of rain, Baruch Hashem. And then we have to sometimes say, although it's not really done very often, that there's a lot of good things that we're doing. We're doing mitzvahs, and Hashem loves us, and He's pouring His bounty onto us. So, as much as there's tons of baseless hatred, and we can bring tons of examples, there's an example of incredible love that literally takes this and throws it on its head that we could definitely learn from, from these parshios. You have Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was born in Mitzrayim. And there was a difficult exile going on there, and slavery, oppression, death, killing, who knows what was going on. Where was Moshe Rabbeinu raised, though? By and large, he was raised in the palace of Pari, in the lap of luxury. Not only that, at 18, he cared for his brethren, and he killed the Mitzri, and he had to run away. And what did he do for the next 60-some-odd years? He got married, he had a child, and then another child, and he spent 60 years being a Roy Etzoin, just shepherding his, his father-in-law's sheep in the desert. And as the Kliyakar says, he would literally just speak to Hashem and focus on Him, and many Nevi'im became close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu just from doing that, just from spending time in the fields, just alone with Hashem. Here he is, finally, a Kaddish Baruch who tells him, you know what, it's time to return and redeem the nation. You have to be the Mashiach of the nation. You have to take them out of Golis. And he's coming down, and sure enough, he meets his brother Aharon, who is his older brother, who is the last, his entire life, spending all the time with the Yidden. He was in the trenches there with the people that were suffering, helping them, caring for them, taking care of them. He was there in the exile. And sure enough, after all these years, who is he meeting in the desert? He's meeting his brother, Moshe Rabbeinu, who was in the palace. He was raised in luxury. And then he went and spent the last 60 years to speaking to Hashem in the fields. No pressures, no difficulties. And now Moshe Rabbeinu is going to come and say, Listen, Aaron, my older brother, I really respect you a lot, but when I was in the desert, Hashem appeared to me and told me that I should be the one to take out Klal Yisrael from Mitzrayim. Aaron Akoyin, very, very normally, very humanly, could have said, Moshe Rabbeinu, I think you should step aside. I'm older than you. I've been dealing with the people, with them, for the last 83 years of my life. I think you should step aside. He didn't do that, and the Pasuk testifies, not only didn't he do that, but he was absolutely happy in his heart that Moshe Rabbeinu was chosen to be the one. Because he was never found in that place where because of what he was feeling, he had to put other people down. He had to create sinna. No matter what HaKadosh Baruch gives me or you, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Not only that, but in the end, because of that, he got the kahuna which in the end of the day raised him above his brethren. The other day, the other week, I was in shul, and they were doing Birkas Kohanim. And the Kohen, there was only one in the shul, was 18 years old. A little nice, sweet 18-year-old Bachram. But it was incredible, because in the crowd was a Rav from Chalon, who knows Kol HaTorah by heart, a budding Posek that knows just about all of Shulchan Aruch by heart, and there were many other huge Rabbeim and Rabbanim. 
And this little 18-year-old Kohen was standing up there and giving them the blessing of the Kohanim. It just goes to show you again that wherever we are, there's no reason to hit another because this is exactly where HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose each person to be for his mission in his life. Hashem should help us to have just Ahav Aschinam and fill the world with glory. Have a great day.